how deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss the Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the On his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me to life I know that it is finished and I will not boast in anything No gift, no power, no wisdom but I boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid Gain from his reward, I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart his wounds paid my ransom. Your wounds have made Your wounds have made Your wounds have made A way Your wounds have made Your wounds have made Your wounds
I know I'm among friends. This is one of the things about the, the churches in Frinton. It's a privilege to move around and uh, be in uh, each other's churches, which reminds me that uh, I think it's on Thursday, um, Maundy Thursday, we meet in Homelands at 7.30, I think it's 7.30, uh, for uh, a time of Holy Communion together. Uh, I think that's right. Um, before I get down to the Word of God, uh, various memories come flooding back. I remember the last time uh, I preached here, which long before the, the pandemic, but Sandra was sitting at the back, and I looked at her, and I remember commenting on the fact that uh, we watched this uh, television program uh, in the barn, you know, the, the, the experts doing all their work. And, and Sandra reminded me of um, one of the experts. I can't remember. Uh, I think Susie, I think that's her name. Uh, she's one of the uh, experts who does uh, all the work with leather. But uh, I, I, it almost distracted me from what I w- wanted to say. And then also, uh, thinking of that, um, I um, was looking at Facebook over the last few weeks. I read about your trip uh, to the Holy Land. That was, that was great. Uh, and we need to pray, don't we, about the internet, because it can be used for good and it can be used for evil, particularly thinking of our, our children and young people. We need to pray for them and uh, and also thinking of the internet I, I i'm reading about paul and becky being at this wedding i don't know if you heard but uh, paul when he was packing packed a, a white shirt that he thought was his and it turned out to be becky's <laughs> but they managed to get around that anyway it's good to be here it's good to be amongst friends it's good to share god's word let's just bow for a prayer Father, we thank you that you speak to us today through your word. Pray that you will open our ears to hear what you're uh, saying to us. Pray that you will open our minds to understand your word. Pray that you will open our hearts and our wills to be obedient to what you tell us to do. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I've entitled uh, my sermon, Who is this Jesus? Maybe an odd question to ask on Palm Sunday. Someday we we talk about the the triumphal entry, don't we? It has already been reminded for for many, it wasn't a triumph at all. Uh, I wonder what was going through Jesus' mind as he rode into Jerusalem. He knew what was going to happen. Uh, It's a Sunday school teacher's dream. I don't know about you when you were, uh, if you ever went to Sunday school, but I remember at the age of about five or six being taught by Miss Lyle. And we used to sit round a table and she had lots of figures and she used to tell stories and move the figures around on the table and she had a whole lot of things for for Palm Sunday. And as I remi- was reminded of that, I thought about the place Miss Lyle. She probably was about 70, at least that's what she seemed to me at that time. Um, but she was a godly lady and she was a link in the chain that brings me here this morning. <laughs> and it's a good idea, perhaps you do this after lunch today, just jot down on a piece of paper all those people who've been a link in the chain that have brought you here this morning. And let's pray that we will be links in other people's chain. Who is Jesus? Well, I want to look at verse 9, first of all, of um, Matthew chapter 21. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And that tells us, I think, three things about who Jesus was, who Jesus is. First of all, he was a king, the king. The Bible tells us that he was of David's line, and David was the that famous king of Israel. Hosanna to the son of David. They were welcoming a king. I don't think they understood what they were saying, quite honestly. They were using these phrases, but they were being prophetic. Jesus was a king. He is the king of David's line. He was God himself. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was the Son of God. He was God himself. And that takes us back to this mystery in Scripture, which we, re which we refer to as the Trinity. You won't find that word in the Bible, but it was a word that was coined by theologians in the early centuries of the Christian church to try and describe a God who is both Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, but one God. We can't really get our minds around it, but that was a sort of a theological construct to help us understand that uh, the man riding on the donkey was God himself. We sing a song, don't we? He was there in the beginning, in the very first chapter of the Bible. And God said, and God said, and God said, and it was done. Who was doing it? The Word of God. Jesus, the living Word of God. And John says in the beginning of his gospel, the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. The man riding on the donkey was nothing less than God himself. God became a man in order to save us. Which brings me on to the third point. He was a saviour. I don't know if the people realise what they were saying. Uh, there's a little note in the, uh, in the margin of my Bible what is Hosanna? A Hebrew expression meaning save, which became an expression of praise. Save now. They were welcoming, although they didn't realise it, the saviour of the world. Most of them, we think, had got another idea of what a saviour was. We've already heard about that this morning. Most people, I think, thought he was going to save than from the tyranny of the Romans. I don't know if any of you have seen that uh, programme, The Chosen. If you get a chance, I think it's available on, on YouTube or you get a, a DVD of it. It's a brilliant uh, series of uh, programmes originally on television in America, written by uh, and, uh, and directed by an American, but it helps the Bible to come to life. He was the saviour. Hosanna, save now. So what's our response to all this? To the man riding on the donkey. The God, the king, the saviour. We have a new king, don't we? Uh, king Charles. And at the coronation, various people are going to swear allegiance to him. It's a dim and distant memory now, but I think when I was ordained, I had to swear allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen as the titular head of the Church of England. But he is the king, and the people will swear obedience to him. And if he is our king, then we have to be obedient to him. What's he telling us to do today? We need to be obedient 
to Jesus, our King. Obedient to the Word, the Word made flesh, the Word of God. What's he telling you and I to do today? It'll be something different. But because he is King, we need to be obedient to everything that he tells us to do. We must be obedient to him. But he is also God, and we have to worship him. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. We worship God in Christ. We worship him. Years and years ago, uh, after the coronation of uh, our late queen, uh, my mother encouraged my sister and I to go and see Her Majesty. Uh, I can have only been about uh, six or seven, I think, and uh, my sister was a couple of years older. And after the coronation, they made a series of royal tours around London. Uh, and I'm a born and bred suburban Londoner. And my mother took Janet and I to the South Circular Road in Dulwich. And we sat on the curb for a couple of hours and waited for the Queen to come. And eventually the car arrived, an open top car, and there was Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh waving and we all cheered and waved back. We weren't actually worshipping her, but it gives us an idea of as to God, to Jesus as our King, we worship him. And not just here on a Sunday. Every part of our lives should be given to God to worship him. He alone is worship worthy of our worship. Jesus is God. He's our king. We worship him. He's God almighty. We worship him with the whole of our lives. And then we decided from that verse that he's also our saviour. Can I read some familiar words to you? Um, I don't know if it, you, some of you remember the Billy Graham Crusades uh, all those years ago, but we were given certain texts. And uh, ones that I remember are Romans 3 and chapter 23. I've got it highlighted here. Where Paul says, For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us needs a saviour. We've again been reminded that of that already this morning. Our God saves. And how does he save? He saves through the death of his son on the cross and the resurrection. Hallelujah. What a saviour. The crowd was shouting out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Thank you for my palm cross. They were waving things. They were waving palm branches and welcoming probably who they thought was going to save them from their Roman, Roman overlords. But he was not that sort of a saviour. And we know that probably, although it's not explicit in scripture, that a few days later, Probably some of those people who'd uh, welcomed him as their saviour, because they were a bit disappointed, were shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. And we must be careful that um, in our relationship with God, we don't say one thing and do another. The whole of our lives must be given to, uh, to the Saviour in worship. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, another verse that came from um, Billy Graham. Find it here. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is our saviour. If we come to him in repentance and faith and recognise him for who he really is, our saviour, then he will forgive us for now and all eternity. Can I go back just for a minute or two to that chain? You and I can be part of a chain in saving others. Some of you may not have given your life to Christ. Some of you may not have recognised that Jesus is your saviour. Or speak to one of the leaders after the service and ask them to pray for you and with you. But back to that chain... I don't know if any of you have heard of uh, a, a, a pro it's not a program really, but a thing called Thy Kingdom Come, which was started about uh, oh, eight or nine years ago, I think, uh, uh, mainly as an Anglican initiative, but it's now been taken on by the church universally uh, as a program um, between Ascension and Pentecost, when we are encouraged to pray that God's kingdom will come, the rule and reign of Christ. And we pray for individuals. And this program challenges us, saying, during these days, these eight days, I think it is, pray for individuals. I remember, again, much longer back than I t cared to, to, to think of, my mum used to pray for me every single night. And I can remember um, this little prayer. Some of you will know it. But one of the phrases went, uh, suffer him to come to thee. My mum prayed that prayer every night. And at the age of 11, at a crusader camp, I gave my life to Christ. So can I challenge you, as I challenge myself, between those at that time of ascension and Pentecost, to pray for people who you believe that God is putting you there as links in the chain for them to come and know him. Ask him, first of all, to, to indicate which people those need to be for you, but pray for them for, for those days. Pray for them afterwards. Pray for them before, but pray for them. You may want to share them the names with a, with a Christian friend, but pray for God's kingdom to come in their lives. We know that God's kingdom isn't a place. God's kingdom is the rule and reign of Christ. So during this, this period, this coming period, I think it is end of April or beginning of May, that for five, what, maybe, maybe three, maybe 23 people to come to faith in Jesus, be links in their chain. So, three thoughts from the Palm Sunday story. We acknowledge Jesus as our King, as our God, and as our Saviour. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminder from your word that you are our King. Help us to serve you with every part of our lives. You are our God. Lord, help us to worship you with every part of our lives. You are our Saviour. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Help us to be instruments in your hand to bring your message of salvation to others. Help us to submit to you today, this week, and throughout our lives as our Saviour. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all Jesus' face 